Hangout on air is live. Audio seems to be working. My mic is on. Good to go. Nickel Man, Byron, and Steam Bricks and Matt's trains are already in the chat. So uh, we'll jump right into it. Left off here last night, finished the locomotive. Went pretty well. Um, time to build the tender, starting on page 42 of the instructions. Aaron Burnett's watching and Endothermic. Welcome, everybody. Hope you enjoy. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend and Sunday. We'll just uh, go ahead and jump right into it then. This shouldn't uh, take anywhere near as long as the, the locomotive did. Robert Jr. is here, Spider Glenn. Welcome everybody. Should do a running session when you get it finished. I definitely will do that. Um, kind of what I'm kind of thinking of is laying up, laying out some track in my apartment and uh, running it on that, which would be fun. I've got a, a fair amount of space and track. So that's the plan and it'll be a separate, uh, separate video, something like that. Morning from California, Finder 87. Welcome. <clears throat> How's your guys' Sunday going? <clears throat> Let's see, starting off with the decking and the uh, the assembly that holds together the holds the IR receiver in in uh, the tender. Good places I need to start, I guess. Easy enough to follow the, follow the instructions. Oh, wow, that's excellent, endothermic. It's great to hear. Will I ever do some instructional videos, basic train build theories? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I can certainly consider that. Um, I haven't been able to put uh, a lot of time into videos like that for YouTube um, in more recent times, but I sure can consider that. It's definitely not something that would be extremely difficult, I guess, but. I can uh, keep that in mind. Subscription videos for BMR, uh, possibly, yeah. Definite, definitely a decent idea. Thank you for the suggestion. Did I find the missing part? No, I didn't. Wherever it went, it's gone really well. I, I honestly, I spent a while looking for it after the stream and obviously during the stream, but I have no idea where it went. I'm sure I'll find it at some point, but uh, no, I didn't, didn't yet. Uh, now they separate the instructions to do the uh, Great Britain specification and European specification tender, but I'm just going to do the United States version. Basically, as it would have looked like being outshot by Baldwin, so or one of the other builders. There were there were many.
Dave Strains, welcome. Working on the tender. Shouldn't take anywhere near as long as the uh, locomotive did yesterday. Much more simple. Don't have to worry about any running gear or something like that. So we'd be running trains and suddenly get a pain when I step on that piece. You might be right. <laughs> I kind of hope I don't have to step on it to find it, but I guess anything's possible at this point. Tenders are always deceivingly complicated. Ah, oh, that's interesting. I haven't, uh, I haven't heard that actually. I did uh, in doing the research for the S160s. I never, I didn't see anything that suggested that. But that's very interesting. I wonder if there's any, uh, any, any value to that, or any, if, if there's any truth behind that. I'm sure there might be. see 1800 coaches for brick model aero i'm assuming you mean 1800s era coaches rather than 1800 coaches because that would be a lot <laughs> but um yeah one of the things that i would i would really like to do w is uh go into like the victorian era victorian america era i guess of railroading um there's a small handful of locomotives that I would like to build from that time period and uh, cars as well. So it's definitely on my radar. Just we got other things to uh, to attend to for the time being. Didn't the S160s have a problem with exploding? Yeah, um, the infamous water glass problem or sight gauge problem. Um, the S160 had this uh, sight gauge for the water for the water in the boiler. Basically, it just tells you how much water is in the boiler uh, at any time. And so there was an issue with these locomotives where it would say it was the water gauge would say that the boiler was full of water, but really there wasn't. And so just the way steam locomotive, the way steam works in locomotives, if you leave the fire burning for too long without any water in the boiler above it it'll uh heat up really quickly and as soon as uh as soon as you put more water in the boiler after it gets to a certain temperature it'll uh, basically just can rapidly trans uh change the water to steam and basically just cause an explosion and it's extremely extremely uh <laughs> it's pretty deadly um definitely not something that you want to have happen Casey Jones engine. Yeah, maybe that's a good, that's a possibility. Maybe not the, for the first engine because we might want to do something a little bit more generic. I've got a really good idea for that already, but we'll see. Ever thought about building a diesel for BMR in my personal collection? Uh, I built the GP9 uh, several years ago, but I uh, never actually got around to building it in real life. It was just an LED. And it stayed that way. So, <clears throat> I'd like a. I would like a. There's a couple of diesels that I have in mind. Most of them are GE models. They're not super modern, but I would like to uh, have a couple of diesels. On uh, in my uh, personal collection. Just making sure I didn't miss any steps. BMR ever did a diesel kit? I think an F7 would be a great option. Yeah, that's that's uh that is a good option. Um, obviously diesel, we got so many, um, so many to choose from. We just have to really think long and hard about our decision because, you know, for diesel more more, I would say for diesels more than steam locomotives, they have to be kind of uh, versatile in what railroads we could produce decals for but an f7 is definitely definitely a, a good candidate 
Although I wouldn't want to steal Tony Sava's thunder. He's got instructions for an F7. Very good instructions for a very good F7, I should add. So uh, <clears throat> we might not start with an F7, but that's a good, good option. <clears throat> hey, Ted, the train is here. Welcome. Hope you enjoy. Alco RS3. Oh yeah, Alco something like that. Basically anything that um, the idea that we would be pursuing with a diesel, which we would probably produce as premium instructions. Um, the idea there is to have something that's a little bit more generic and used by several different railroads. So we don't, you know, we don't have to only, you know, if somebody wants to buy that diesel, they don't have to build uh, a diesel from just one particular railroad they can you know change the color scheme and you know to to their liking or you know model a, uh, a different railroad or you know whatever so we want to leave those options open so that's kind of our thinking there let's see Thomas models actually built the P the Pen C F G one. That's <laughs> I might have to go and check that out. We were talking about that last night. The uh, K and L trains uh, version of that was pretty interesting. This is correct. Yes, yes, it is. All right, next page. Instructions as is a super chief. Yeah, that would. Uh, you'd be right, but uh, like I said, Tony Sava has already has already got that taken care of. So I'm not super. It's not high on our prior. It wouldn't be high on our priority list by any means, because you know, to out of respect for Tony, he's got a really solid model. And uh, it's, uh, it's been solid locomotive and uh, did a good job putting the instructions together. Diesels are somewhat easy to build. Yeah, I guess I can agree with that. They can be, anyways. They're not all. They aren't always, because oftentimes it depends on. Uh, in some ways, it depends on how detailed you want to get with them. Because um, I know some people really like to look at how many panels are on particular locomotives on the side, or they like to get you know use the uh, use the bricks to their advantage to you know line up like patterns like that, which makes a lot of sense, but uh, can get crazy at some times. So, but uh, a lot of people have built some really nice diesels and, and doing and using those methods. So if BMR ever did an electric engine, we should get the guy who did the GG ones and the pen lug layout. Uh, best GG one ever made. Yeah, that was uh, that was Nate Brill of pen lug. He definitely he definitely did a good job on those locomotives. Um, I would really like to build a GG1 for myself. Um, and probably could do a lot of updating on, on that engine based off of his design and 
not that it was bad. I don't mean that at all. It's just probably it's you know it's just old at this point. So could use a bit of freshening up, if you will. Um, but yeah, GG1 would be right up there with options for an electric locomotive. Thing about electric locomotives, it I think generally they're a little bit more railroad specific, you know, in it's kind of like steam locomotives, if if I'm remembering correctly. I don't, I'm not extremely familiar with diesels, so maybe I'm off base, but maybe not. Strasburg ones here, welcome. Ever thought about building 2926? No, that's uh, somebody else did that. We actually, I actually wrote a, uh, an article reviewing the model, and it's posted on Brick Model Railroader. You'll have to scroll back a little bit. I posted it. I believe it was December that I posted that article, but I can't remember. But uh, it's on there if you want to go and look for it. Am I almost done? Not quite. I'm on page 47 of the instructions. Um, I've got the locomotive pretty much complete, minus decals, and then I've got you know a good start on the tender. Build a Penn Central one and constantly derail it. <laughs> Building the rear coupler cut bar. Getting there. Today's stream definitely isn't going to take as long, so, you know, that might, <laughs> a few people might be happy about that. Yesterday we streamed for about three hours, 20 minutes. That was crazy. Hope you guys enjoyed it, though, for those of you that stuck around. I certainly enjoyed it. Next page, more bricks. Perfect idea, build Thomas the train and crash it over and over again. <laughs> Ever thought about making an instruction kit for the Blue Comet? No way. Well, it's not my engine, so it's not my it's not my uh, model, so not my call. But I don't know if Kale would quite be up for that. <laughs> that would uh, most likely be lend itself better to a premium instructions. I'm sorry, a, a a kit, a full kit rather than premium instructions. Sorry about that. Um, but that's Kale's call, and I don't think that's one that he's gonna make. <laughs> Gabe's Trains was here for the entire three hours and 24 minutes last night. That's incredible. More power to you, and I hope you enjoyed. This is definitely not going to take as long. We're making really good progress with the tender. Favorite official Lego train, I guess, by set. Uh, the Emerald Knight's really good. I like that. I like that set a lot. It was uh, certainly groundbreaking for... For trains and that's definitely you know something to uh something to note but uh i am very partial to the 7740 12 volt train what about a reading crusader kit maybe sometime in the future i don't know it definitely wouldn't be the same crusader that i have right now it'd be my uh redesigned redesign version which is you know yet to happen but uh i'm not i'm not necessarily ruling that out yet Just a solid maybe for now Make a layout based around Amtrak and make sure there are no straight tracks to represent all the tracks they inherited from Penn Central. <laughs> I don't have any interest in modeling Amtrak or Penn Central. 
I do have uh, set in stone plans for my layout, but I haven't started on it yet. So I, you know, maybe it's not as set in stone, but I have, uh, I have been doing a lot of, uh, of serious planning work for my, what's eventually going to be my own personal layout that I'll, ideally I'll be able to uh, have it set up at home, uh, at least in some parts of it. And then I would like to also be able to bring it around to some, to some shows. So I would make it somewhat uh, modular or at least able to be broken down and with relative ease, but uh, that remains to be seen. Got a, <laughs> there's a lot of other things that I need to need to do before I get to that point. Not, unfortunately, not in, the, not in uh, the position to be building a layout right now, although I'd like to. Maybe starting with one module or something like that. Make a good companion to the T1. Yeah, you're not really wrong. Four and a half stud pieces of flex tubing now for the handles, which I believe is these. Yep. Here we go. Maybe you and Kayla should release Norfolk and Western 1218. Yeah, that's that's not. I would say that's definitely not outside the realm of possibility. Probably would be a kit, but uh, definitely not something I'm going to say no to right now. And you know, not. It's not entirely my decision, but it's. Uh, I would. I personally would love to have a 1218 or an A class. <laughs> Cotton Belt Atlantic kit handed over chief. Now I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to keep that one for a little while. I like my Atlantic a lot. I've got a good uh good family connection to that to that engine. It's one of my favorites. I need to uh that's also going to get rebuilt at some point or a version 2, not necessarily rebuilt. I'll keep the original. It's on the list. Putting the ladder rungs on the tender now. Getting there. Nickel man's back. Welcome back. <clears throat> Here's what I have so far. Kind of extremely boxy and very small for a tender. I think even though I think uh, Kale's Mon Pa number 43 has a bigger tender than this. I'm sorry, smaller tender than this. Which is, uh, <laughs> it's a very small tender. I'd help if I paid attention a little bit more. Don't let late the Atlantic dive off the table again. Yeah, definitely. Definitely won't. Favorite part about this S160 kit? Uh, I like just the fact that it's actually a kit and, you know, people can, people can, you know, buy it. <laughs> I was uh, starting to talk about that last night. Uh, towards the end of the stream that it's really the fact that I'm building a steam locomotive right now from a kit and I know I designed it you know like well co-designed it um you, you know I'm aware of that but you know the fact that the fact that I'm actually building a steam locomotive from a kit is still kind of mind-blowing to me like it's uh <laughs> it feels kind of weird but it's really cool and I'm enjoying it a lot so I guess that's my favorite part. Uh, are they not all your favorites? Yeah, I guess that's a good point. Does Kale have any engines that don't run good because everything else? <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, we talked about the Curse of the Western Maryland 
last night. So there's that. Other than that, I don't, I don't really think that there's, you know what? Yep, that's exactly what I, <laughs> exactly what I thought. The trucks on this S160 are not identical, so let's see. Reading the chat again. Current status of the Reading T1 kit. Uh, we're looking into options for producing the kit. Um, there's a lot of details that we have to work out before we can move too far too uh, too far forward with it. But uh, so there's you know some things that we need to work out. But uh, we're also looking into we're also going to be hopefully very soon uh, getting the model. Uh, built in LDRAW so we can start chipping away at the instruction process. So it's obviously not something that we forgot about. It's just we've had to prioritize other things again. So, you know, that is one of those things that we have to do every now and then. Got to focus resources where we can. Black pieces on a black table, smart. Yeah, exactly. Heisler's here, my goodness. Good to hear from you, my friend. Heisler has uh, been on YouTube for quite a while, and I remember watching his videos way back in the day before I was <laughs> before I was doing much else with with Lego trains at that point. Good to hear from you, my friend. Creepy pasta about the Western Maryland curse. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Six stud long pieces of flex tube. I think there's extra flex tube in here. Which is fine can never have too much flex tube i've got like several base plate long sections in i've got like 45 base plate long pieces of black flex tube in a bag <laughs> it's uh extremely useful stuff Heisler actually built an S160 back in the day as well, many years ago. Do you still have that? Um, do you still have that S160? Where did I get the flex tube? I got it out of lug bulk. is one of the benefits from being in a recognized lug. And that's really all I can say about that. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Heisler. I... <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm only a person and I can't do anything about the time difference, but I left it up in case you're interested in going back and watching it. And I'm glad you're here too. Am I going to make cotton belt coaches for my Atlantic? Uh, it's a definite. I am kicking myself that I haven't gotten around to doing that yet, but I definitely will. Uh, definitely will do that. I've got a couple picked out that, uh, well, three specifically, but I need to find out a little bit more information on them before I do too much because uh, they're kind of particular and, uh, you know, just in doing the research on the Atlantics, which are, you know, kind of a vague locomotive as it is. They only made six of them. So, you know, they're not, they're not extremely easy to find information for, but 
I'm chipping away, chipping away at that process. So, all right, there's one truck taken care of, and the other one is pretty much a standard uh, Lego freight truck, like what BMR does. Ah, oh, you don't have the S160 anymore. That's sorry to hear that. Matt's Mox is here as well. Welcome to the welcome to the stream. So, um, Heisler, are you doing more traditional scale modeling now, or uh, is that incorrect? I remember what I I think I was watching some of your more recent videos, and it was uh, like non-Lego, but still, you know, model railroading. Might have a go at a Texas type. Yeah, you can. Maybe yours will work better than mine. I s what up? I see you're building an awesome train. That's correct. I'm building the uh, Brickmania S160 that I co-designed. I think you can see that. I'm not sure. I've got my chat covering part of my window. Oh, you can't. <laughs> there you go. There's the, uh, the sleeve that goes over the box. Welcome to the chat, by the way, Plymouth. Uh, let's see, next we're gonna put on the coupler. Don't know when this kit will become available. Uh, it was available in the middle of last week, but they sold out once again. I believe they're gonna make a third batch um best thing to do would be to uh uh go to brickmania.com and then sign up for their email list it's free and you just get a basically two emails a week or you know sometimes less of uh like what brickmania has been been up to and like the promotions that they're running and what they're restocking that would be the best way to uh, find out about that um but yes, I believe that there is going to be a third batch. So in case you uh, are interested in picking one up, Lego or not model railroading is fun no matter what. That's a definite thing. It's something I can definitely agree with. How many S160 kits were produced? Uh, they made, Brickmania did 50 and uh, they're all gone. <laughs> they did uh, in 225 uh, two runs of 25 and they were available online and there was a couple in their retail stores and they all went I'm gonna grab a lightsaber bar so I can put in this uh, this flex tubing on minifig hands one moment Ended up just being more flex too, but that'll work. Oh, that's awesome, uh, Heisler. That's good to hear. I, um, I'm still subscribed to your channel, so hope I hopefully hope to see you post some videos of it. I'd be happy to happy to watch them. There we go. Putting flex tube or minifig hands into flex tube is always the most tedious thing ever. Well, it's one of them. There are several tedious things that occur in building Lego steam locomotives. Probably the hottest kit Brickmania had in years. Yeah, that was, uh, it, it, it definitely surprised us all with how fast they went uh, when they first released them. And I was surprised, like, they actually didn't even tell me that they were gonna restock them when they did uh last week i think it was last week um yeah i actually had no idea about it because i would have you know said something about it a lot sooner but um it blew us it blew us all away and they pretty much instantly committed to a second batch and then those are gone and i'm pretty sure they come they almost they're committed to a third batch at this point so 
you know, it's really crazy, but it, you know, on a plus, on the plus side, it does show that, you know, there's, you know, a demand for stuff like this. So it just, hopefully it just means that we're going to be able to do more stuff. Cause I would, you know, there's, there's definitely no shortage of locomotives that a company like Brickmania could, you know, produce as a kit. You know, there's a lot of like military, there's a lot of locomotives with military tie-ins. And even if they didn't want to just stick to doing military locomotives, there's still got plenty of options there. So, you know, there's all kinds of, all kinds of things you could do. I should maybe try and make an NKP 765. I would love to have a nickel plate Berkshire in my collection. I will at some point. I think uh, that was the original choice for the BMR steam locomotive instead of the Reading T1, uh, if you read the article. But um, we changed our mind, obviously. But we will be getting back to that locomotive at some point. So it's definitely still a strong candidate for something that we can produce as a as a kit so it's a solid uh, we definitely want to at least get that engine so and then after that we just have to see about you know work through the processes of putting it together as a kit so it's definitely something that we can we can seriously consider Let's see another one Pneumatic tubes are much better than flex hose to use. It depends on what you want. Pneumatic tubing is really great uh, in a lot of, in certain applications. Flex tubing is obviously a lot more rigid and you know, it's got its, got its uses too. <laughs> Matt gaming and brick. He hasn't finished my first live stream yet. <laughs> I'm just kind of cranking at cranking it out right now. Getting this S160 built, and nobody's saying you have to watch all of the streams either. <laughs> Chipboard central line at the moment, so I don't know what point it's. Uh, I got you. I know what you mean there, but um, hopefully it's going well, and I'd be happy to take a look at it whenever you are comfortable with showing it off. The only problem is that Brick Mania will trying to fit Lego train tracks if they produce any other train. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. I'm thinking that you. I apologize. I think uh, you're referring to like the the physical size of the locomotive as well. That's the reason why we went with the, you know, unofficial, or I guess maybe a semi-official BMR slash pen lug slash eight studs to ten foot scale that we've been doing. Um. In researching locomotives, it's like, well, we were looking at the S160 specifically by that point, um, looking at, you know, different lengths, you know, scaling, basically scaling the locomotive in our heads and a bit on paper before we actually started building anything and working through the scale process. And we were thinking about like, this wouldn't be super practical as a 135 kit. So we decided to go with the 148 scale and, you know, Dan Siskin was, you know, more than happy to just make that accommodation for us, which was really, really something about him. So really, really nice of him to do is, you know, he obviously didn't, didn't have to do that or even, you know, give us the opportunity to build the locomotive in the first place. So. Think that two M motors would be enough to power a small articulated. Uh, it's a possibility. I would recommend uh, L motors though. They're more powerful. There's more torque, and they have about 90% of the speed of an L of an M motor, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I looked at that kind of stuff, but my uh, my go-to motors at this point is L motors. So hopefully that uh, hopefully that gives you a, a little bit of insight. All right, so one second, and I'll show you guys a little uh, my next progress. Pretty sure that's supposed to sit out. Yes, it is. Sit out there like this. All right, so here's the tender so far. Just got to build the decking and the coal load and hook this thing up to the locomotive, and then I think we'll be, uh, be ready to roll. 
So I'm gonna leave that over here, out of the way. I'm gonna consolidate my part piles a little bit before moving on. Bird just smacked your window, oh no. Let's see, eight studs to 10 feet, one stud to two, well, 1.25, yeah, one, one stud to 15 inches. Uh, yeah, pen lug scale is very close to O scale. It rules down to about 146 scale. O scale is, well, O gauge is 148. So, I hope supply of O motors isn't dry soon, yeah. L motors probably would work with inside the boiler. Um, I mean, we can fit it inside this boiler, which is, you know, it's not super big. I'm sure the boiler on the FG1 is bigger than this. So I'm sure you could, uh, I'm sure you probably could uh, fit it in. Or if you just wanted to use M, M motors, I'm, you know, that's, they definitely would fit. You'd lose a bit of, you'd lose a fair amount of torque though. And to something like an FG1, if it existed, well, it's basically an A-class, but something like an FG1, I would want to have a good amount of torque with. So that's, that's my thinking there, but you know, you don't have to listen to me. Just my two cents worth and worth that much. Did Brick Mania at least give you a free t-shirt? <laughs> they gave a, yeah, um, we worked out a deal. Um, I'm not gonna go into the details of it, but uh, is, uh, it, they were an absolute pleasure to work with and I really hope we can again. When they say it was a kid, I knew they were going to be sold out. No, yeah, I was thinking that they were going to at least last through the weekend. They released it on a Friday, and I think it was. I thought it was going to, you know, take at least that long to get them all out of the out, out the door. But it was. I was very. I underestimated that pretty greatly, <laughs> but in a way, I've never been so happy to be wrong. No worries about being late. We're we're fine here. Welcome to the stream. Hope you enjoy. Let's see, make sure I'm not missing any steps. Oh, I see. This must be what it's like to build BMR instructions sometimes. It's learning how other people lay out instructions rather than doing it from your head. Yes, I guess I am almost done. I've got the tender basically done except for the decking and the coal load. And then I'm gonna hook it up to the, to, to the locomotive and uh, drive it back and forth a little bit on the straight track that I have in, in front of me. <clears throat> I am getting very close though. I gather they had a valve installed purposely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many uh, Axis countries ever used S160s. I'm sure they would uh, sabotage the locomotive if they if they knew that it it would uh, become uh, that it would be uh, captured at any point. Okay, I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything before I move ahead. I did miss something. Yep, sure did. Toolbox is supposed to be a little bit a little bit taller. 
if you want to do another steam locomotive brick mini, you should try and put the new power function system in the locomotive. Yeah, that's a that's an option. Um, I'm still not convinced that powered up is going to be the best thing for uh, more, you know, trained modelers like such as myself. But I definitely, it's I, at some point, I really would like to try and, you know, build a legitimate model using the powered up system rather than uh, power functions or you know custom stuff like PFX and and the and the like. I think it, I still think it's uh, I think it could it's still a possibility. What uh, motor did I use for my Atlantic? I used a single L motor in that engine. Will I set up a loop later and run the engine with some cars? Yes, I will. Uh, that'll be a separate video, though. I'm not going to do that on the stream. That's correct, Matt. Uh, I believe you're correct about that. We sent the S160s over after, I think, no, we sent them over, if I recall correctly, we sent them over before the invasion uh, of Normandy, and then they were sent out of England after that to help, you know, kind of aid the rebuilding efforts. I could be wrong about that. It's been a while since I looked at, looked at that information. <clears throat> oh, hey, Owen. No problem. Glad you could make it. We're almost done. We're getting very close to the end. the powered up M motor is better than the PFM motor. I think that they're pretty similar. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm very, I'm pr I think that they're similar or at least very comparable. Yeah, I need to go on and stock up on power functions too. I got to get like eight L motors at some point, probably. You're getting real close, guys. I knew it wasn't going to be as long as uh, as long as yesterday. They didn't include valve underneath the cab that when open would let all the steam out of the boiler and cause an explosion. Interesting. I actually did not come across that in my research. Adding the last bits of the coal detail on, meaning we're getting really close to the end. I'm building mine exactly as the instructions call for. So, have I ever thought about a cab forward being restored one day? I haven't thought about that. That would be uh, that would be cr pretty cool. All right, this is the last step. I'm gonna go ahead and hook the engine up to the tender. The instructions are done. The if you build the United States model, you basically just build straight through from page one to page fifty nine. And then after that is the uh, differences in the pilot truck and the tender. There's very, it's not very many differences um, for the Great Britain spec and then the European spec in that order. And then uh, at the very end, gives you the decal placement and then this awesome render of the S160. So I'm, what I'm going to do is put the decals on. I'm going to use the USATC decals. The number on that is, the number that they included on that is 6002, which is 
just the number of the Brickmania's number for the set is 6002. Sorry, clearing some notification Windows notifications off of my screen. Um, into actual Lego sets or just custom Lego trains? I, I get some. I have I get some sets every now and then. Definitely not as often as I build as I build trains, but I get some custom sets every now and then. I've got several in my um in my closet <laughs> that I haven't uh, opened yet. <laughs> that I, I definitely need to. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Try to get these instructions on the best that I can without any, without any issues. Gotta put this on just to give myself a reference point. Brickmania does do some really awesome work with their printing and stickers. Special crane instruct crane instruction kit for your rolling stock collection. I definitely, that's something that I might do <laughs> eventually. Um, is something like a maintenance of way train, but it's got other things to do, like always. But uh, all right, that's one decal on the tender. It's easier to pick this thing up when there's a battery in it, because so you don't cave in the uh, the top decking every time you try to grab it. Pen lug needs an auxiliary unit. USATC decals, and I get the. 6002 number on the tender. <laughs> I have to do this with two hands. Well, that's not straight. That's better. Oh wait, I missed the uh, the grab rails on the back. Good thing I I knew there was extra flex tube. I knew that extra flex tube had to go somewhere. It's a little easier to put the decal on with without it anyway. So there's U.S. Army Trans Transportation Corps USA. Same thing on the other side, and then six thousand two on the tender. Live stream when you open open the closet. <laughs> Let's see, now I gotta put the decals on the locomotive, just the two on the cab. For the cab number. Is one side now the other, and we're almost done. Here we go six thousand two, six thousand two. Ever consider run a S162 without power functions with you know, it's discontinued? Uh, I don't know. Um, that's up to them. I kind of doubt it because they, looking at it from their perspective, I think that they would want to keep it kind of all of their stuff kind of consistent. So, you know, somebody who buys, you know, pays for the, the full kit with all the, you know, the electronics in it and stuff like that might get a little upset if they sold a version without all the electronics in it. You know, I, might not might not work so well for that but it's up to them um i'm not going to say no it's just i i kind of doubt it so what i'm going to do is hook up my locomotive into the tender it's a really nice uh, it's actually a pretty nice 
uh, pretty nice way of doing it. Fits in there really well. Basically, it's got this whole assembly that you can take out and then put back in. And it's very tidy. I'm going to go ahead and throw a battery in it. Correct my wire routing a little bit. There. Turn it on. Excellent. Stuff all the wires down in there. Pop the top back on and we're done. There's the S160 and the tender. I apologize for the lighting. Hopefully it's uh, bearable. I'm going to see if I can do this a little bit. So it's on right now. I'm going to grab my remote. It works. Then perfect. I'm really happy with this. Answer a couple more questions in the chat and we'll wind down for the day. Uh, show in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, I don't know. I don't know when that'll be. Um, thanks everybody. I really like, I really like how it turned out. Obviously I knew how it was going to turn out, but it was absolute blast to build. Um, like I said, it's weird to use instructions for a steam locomotive, but it's, it's a, kind of a fun and refreshing and different uh, different thing to do rather than designing it out of my head. Um, Mass Spurs has com been completed, yeah. That's true, as he drives it off the table, no. Would it run through nine volt switches if the two rear drivers were swapped? Uh, it would be very close, but I think uh, you might need to play around with the tender, con the connection to the tender, but it would be very close. Um, and it doesn't, it does run through the switches sometimes. It's just kind of a matter of. It's the, it's got to do with the way the uh, the flanges and then the guard the the guide rail on the turnout path um, gets kind of weird. And it hits that well the flange hits the guard rail uh, sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. Like we've tested it on all on all that track, and you know sometimes it works with the. Sometimes it works on the nine volts and sometimes it doesn't, but it always works on the power functions. It's just the way that that track is made, it's more forgiving. Um, but yeah, here we go. That's it. I did order the uh, Brick Stuff light kit. That's uh, gonna be on its way to me in the coming week. So what I might do is wait until I get that, install it in my locomotive, and then I'll do, I'll set up the track on my floor and uh, run it around. And obviously I've got my flat card, the M4A1 Sherman tank on it too. So I think it turned out pretty well. Um, I'm, you know, again, I'm really happy with the, with the, uh, and having a locomotive, a new locomotive from my collection for one thing. And I'm, obviously I designed it, but it's, it's such a cool thing. It's such a cool concept. And I'm really hoping that, uh, I have the the uh, the privilege of working with Brickmania again to do more locomotives and um and you know expand their railroad product line you know and obviously we've got plans for Brick Model Railroad or two but you know this is this is its own really cool thing so and I guess for right now there's no telling what the future will hold exactly but you know it would it would definitely be cool to see and I I really hope to to do what I can with all that so um let's see. Uh, no plans for being in the southeast, uh, unfortunately. That's uh, no uh, no real plans there. I don't know I don't know when or if that'll change, but hopefully we can. Uh, oh man, color me bright. Just join the chat. I'm sorry. We we we're, we're just now wrapping up. Um, if you did you know if you did join on the later side, I will leave my stream up if you want to go back and watch the rest of it. But um, 
you know, I'll give you another look at the locomotive here. So this is uh, the Brickmania uh, S160 steam locomotive, co-designed by me and Kale Leapart, my good friend, um, using power functions and 1L motor geared directly to the, to the wheels. Uh, I can personally attest that this is an extremely robust locomotive. The powertrain in it is a very, very, is a, a very, very nice design. I think I mentioned yesterday on the stream, Kale and I ran this engine. Well, we ran our prototype engine, which is pretty much identical to the, to the kit version. We ran our prototype engine for 15 hours over uh, the course of a show weekend, and we had absolutely no problems with it. So um, I know that for a fact that it run, that it works well. I know for a fact that it'll pull well too. It's a very strong, very strong design. Um, and obviously if you use the brick model railroad or bearings in, in your, uh, in your cars, you can get a lot of, get a lot of use out of this locomotive. It's a, it's a, it's a nice design. I'm, I'm really happy with the, with the way it turned out. So, and I'm really happy with uh, the, having the kit now too. So, you know, all good here. I'm a good, good review from me, but uh, I guess I'm a little biased. Well, I'm, well my back here, I'd be full of full-size trains? Probably not. I don't know if I'll ever have a backyard that big. Um, I definitely will make a video of it running. Uh, it might be a little while once I get the light kit, like I mentioned, but uh, we'll see. Have three of them run at BrickFest. Yeah, it depends on if Kale gets his S160 built. We could have three operating S160s at, uh, at uh, Philly BrickFest. Alicia just joined as well. I'm sorry, we're just winding down. Um, again, I, I'll leave I'll leave the stream posted on my channel if... if uh, if you want to go back and watch the rest. But uh, for now, guys, I really appreciate you guys for watching. This is kind of a record for me doing one live stream per day from starting on Friday, starting with the Sherman and the flat car and then moving into the S160, the locomotive and tender yesterday and today, respectively. Um, this was a lot of fun. Um, I really, like I said, I really hope that I get to work with Brick Mania again. This is a, an amazing, an amazing thing to be able to do. And uh, it's really cool to have um really awesome locomotive kits and and uh and, and rail car kits you know full kits on the market these days and i'm really uh really happy to be a part of that so i guess i'll leave it there um thank you guys very much for watching um i hope you've enjoyed the live streams um i don't know what uh what other videos i'm going to be posting in uh in any time soon oh i forgot to show off the minifigs do that real quick i don't know what other videos i'll be posting uh super soon but um just knock them over i know that uh i will be probably going out to kale's uh fairly soon to go to the train show in timonium maryland we're not displaying there but uh I'll be there and walking around and hanging out. So if you're at that show uh, and see me, please come by and say hi. I'd be happy to talk with you for a while. Um, Kale and I are also going to uh, take care of a few things for Brick Model Railroader. And at some point in the future, I will be visiting uh, Howard Zane's layout uh, as well, which I'm ex extremely excited about and uh, very humbled by uh, uh, having the offer to be able to do that. So I uh, I know I'm allowed to take some videos and uh, photos while I'm there, so I'm probably going to gonna post all of that when I uh when I get the chance to after I after I make the visit so I'm really looking forward to that and so um I hope you guys are too it's definitely something that I can post on my channel so I'll leave it there for today guys once again thank you guys very much for watching uh three live streams in three days uh, I hope you've enjoyed all of them um I you know hope you guys have all had a great weekend and um I'll leave it there <laughs> I'm rambling again. Oh, I'm, I'm going to stop talking, let you guys get on with your day. Hope you guys have a great uh, rest of the weekend. And uh, thanks for watching again. Thanks for all your support. And uh, be sure to follow me on Instagram. My handle is at Emperor of the North Pole. That's the only place that I really post anything about Lego, so you can follow me there. I post a little bit more frequently than I do to YouTube. Uh, if you uh, don't mind, consider subscribing on YouTube to get more, uh, to get more awesome content such as this. Um, I definitely will do what I can, <laughs> um, but uh, you know that a lot of that remains to be seen. But anyways, thank you guys very much for watching once again, and I'll uh, leave it there for now. Talk to y'all later.